Hi, this is Ed. Hope you all are having a great day today. I want to talk to you all today about some uh, prophecies in the psalm, especially in uh, Psalm 27. And a lot of psalms have prophecies in them. But I was reading this psalm uh, this morning, and the Holy Spirit really uh, showed me some things in this psalm that I've never seen before. That This is an awesome psalm in and of itself, but it has a lot of applications to the end times, as we will see. So I'm going to read the whole psalm, Psalm 27, and then I'm going to uh, expound on it some from some notes that I've written down uh, concerning what the Holy Spirit showed me on this. So um, I'm going to be reading from the uh, King James Version. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Through war, though war, rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock, and now shall mine head be lifted up above my enemies around me. Therefore I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When thou sayest, Seek my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me, put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help, leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies. For false witnesses are risen up against me, and, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Praise the Lord. We enjoy waiting on him, those of us uh, who are born again and uh, love the Lord. We, we just we want to do whatever we can to walk pleasing to the Lord. So uh, this, this psalm is really packed with a lot of prophecy in it. No doubt a lot of this applied to David when he wrote this psalm, but it also has great significance in these end times, and in particular, in the time we are right now, and also during the tribulation period. Verse 1, we need not be afraid of anything or anyone, for the Lord is our shepherd. He shall take care of all of our needs. Uh, I encourage you to read Psalm 91. Psalm 91 is a psalm of protection if you're struggling with any fear issues. Verse 2, this talks about uh, when the wicked, you know, coming against uh, whether it be David or Israel, in general this, this psalm really speaks of Israel as a whole. And uh, it says in Zechariah chapter 12 that Jerusalem will be a cup of trembling for all the nations that come against her. Those that come against Jerusalem shall be destroyed. They shall not prevail over Jerusalem. Verse 3. This word host is very interesting. This, uh, if you look it up in the, in the Hebrew, it uh, actually can mean any group of people, but it also can refer to angelic beings, hence uh, fallen angels, which I do believe will be appearing in the not-too-distant future on the earth, just like in the Old uh, Testament days in the book of Genesis. It talked about the Nephilim 
the 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 giants you know these uh the sons of god they they were the angels came and mingled themselves among women on the earth and created the these hybrids if you will and uh this fallen race that's why god had to destroy all except for Noah and his family in the flood so these these will be coming uh around again very soon i believe probably right soon after the rapture uh they, they will appear verse four he talks about one thing david's passionate desire was to follow the lord with all his heart to be close to the lord and everything that he did even though he sinned when he sinned he repented immediately and to my knowledge, there is no record, at least in the Bible, that he repeated the same sins again, such as when he committed murder and adultery. He repented, and he was very grieved over his sins. We should be that way, too, when we sin against the Lord. Uh, this word, behold, means to see face to face. And temple is another uh, interesting word here. Temple can refer to a king's palace, a dwelling of God, whether in heaven or on earth. And this is very important. So behold, see him face to face. Those of us who are longing for his appearing, we are longing to see him face to face. Verse 5 talks about a time of trouble. No doubt this has occurred all throughout history, but this end time application is referring to the time of Jacob's trouble, which you can refer to. It, it's referred to in Jeremiah uh, chapter 30, verse 7, all otherwise known as the tribulation period. The bride will be hidden, and also there's a Jewish remnant. That will be hidden during the tribulation one in heaven being the bride one in on earth being the jewish remnant hidden in god's tabernacle that there again that that is a dwelling place it could be either in heaven or on earth again the bride will be hidden in heaven the jewish remnant will be hidden on earth Uh, also, you can find some scriptures on this being hidden in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 20, and Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 3. And, and it's like a dual prophecy there. Again, it's talking about the bride being hidden in heaven and the Jewish remnant being hidden on earth. They go to a place in the wilderness prepared for them by God. Verse 6. Uh, talks about him singing praises to the Lord. In Revelation chapter 5, verse 9, it says, They sang a new song, which I believe is a song of the redeemed. Those who have gone before us, along with the bride, will be singing the song of the redeemed. I am longing for that day. Verse 7 says have mercy this is a very important thing like i said david had a very repentant heart and a scripture that the holy spirit gave me that goes along with this is luke 21 36 we are to pray to be accounted worthy to escape the tribulation hour and to stand before the lord and not be ashamed that is something we should be doing on a regular basis. We should not take it for granted that we should be caught up to be with the Lord. For few, in comparison to what is considered to be the church, will be taken in the rapture. Many will be left behind to be tried during the tribulation hour. This is proven in Revelation chapters 2 and chapter 3. Many people do not understand what these chapters are talking about. Only the Church of Philadelphia is promised to be caught up. The others are not given that promise. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. I was going to 
talk about that in a minute, but also the uh, the Laodicean church will be spewed out of God's mouth. Spewed out, I believe, into the tribulation. And also the corrupt church will be cast into the great tribulation. Verse 8. Thy face, Lord, will I seek. We need to spend time in his presence. The more time we spend in the Lord's presence, the more that we will be like him. There is no other way. Verse 9. Put not thy servant away in anger. Again, this goes along with Revelation chapters 2 and 3. Those who aren't faithful in watching for the Lord, they will be left behind to go through the tribulation period. It does not mean they won't be saved. Some of them will. Some of them will be martyred for their faith. Some of them will turn away from the faith. For scriptures plainly indicate that some will turn away from the faith in the last days. And again, the lukewarm are spewed out, along with the corrupt who are cast in to the great tribulation. Verse 10 talks about uh, being betrayed by family members. And no doubt this is already going on with many, but it's going to get magnified a whole lot worse during the tribulation hour, especially when they start implementing the mark of the beast, you know. When, it, when family members see other family members don't want to take it, they're going to turn them in. And it's interesting what it says here. It, it says, uh, after these family members betray one another, then it says, the Lord will take me up. I find this very interesting. Of course, it has many different applications. It could just mean a, a form of protection that the Lord gives us. However, it also can refer to the rapture. Taken up is very similar to being caught up. Can also refer to the wilderness protection for the Jewish remnant that's hidden during the second half of the tribulation. And it can also apply to those who are martyred. For once they are martyred, they will be with the Lord and they will not have to suffer any longer. Verse 11, teach me thy way. O oh Lord, the Holy Spirit is our teacher, but we must read the scriptures. There's a scripture in Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, which says, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. This knowledge he's talking about is a lack of knowledge of the scriptures. Verse 12 is basically the same as verse 10, where the family members betray one another. Verse 13 basically is stating that all unbelievers will perish. Verse 14, the words wait on are very interesting. At the way this phrase wait on means to expect, to wait for, to look for, to hope for. Ordering at your activities around a future event. Only those watching and ready will be taken up to be with the Lord in the rapture. I hope that you are one of those. Pray to be accounted as worthy to escape the tribulation hour and to stand before the Son of Man and not be ashamed. So until next time, keep looking up. Jesus is coming soon. Bye-bye.